Okay, this is a study about um, music as much as it is about percussion. And uh, we're going to integrate the djembe in today's lesson, which is this African drum I have here. Um, but it's, it's more about the use, proper use of the kinds of sounds you can get out of the djembe while you're playing percussion as a flamenco percussionist. So um, it's just important to remember, as I've said before, um, you really just want to use certain things that are new to flamenco in really small doses. Uh, otherwise, it can just make something that's supposed to be flamenco not sound that flamenco. Um, as with all percussion, you want to play it tastefully, you want to play it underneath cante, underneath baile, underneath guitar. Uh, you're basically just boosting everybody, as we said before. Now, uh, the djembe, I'm not a djembe player, but I, uh, I use it for a couple of sounds that you can get out of it, uh, just to help tie everything together, kind of envelop all the sounds that are happening and, and tie them together. Um, the one I like, just use more than anything, is just this bass sound. It's got a really nice resounding boom. And that's what you want. Uh, once in a while you can set up the boom with a, a hit here, but um, I'm not going to use the djembe very often in any given palo. Now you can use it in pretty much any palo because there's some nice strong accents and uh, you can use it in a lot of different places within any given palo, but usually there's some places that lend themselves more to a good bass sound. So we're going to experiment with that a little bit here now. So let's say we're doing, for example, bulerias. Um, I, can, I can hit this bass on every one, if we were doing sixes, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or if we're thinking more in twelves, I can hit it on every twelve. And there's other places within the compas that I can use it as a little surprise accent, but for the most part, just keeping a good tempo, I'll use it every once in a while maybe in a 12s or 6s. So let's say if I'm doing this pattern, for example. Which we've learned in uh, previous video studies with the Bolivia. I can hit this every, maybe once every other 6, for example. So I could be here. Also, just do it one on every six. I wouldn't keep this up forever, but something like that. Uh, similarly, uh, for fandangos, it's really nice. You can hit. In a tangos, because we're hitting that the two and the four, sometimes it's nice to just save this every once in a while for that four. So in other words, if I'm going one, two, three, four, every once in a while, okay, nice little place to do that. The nice thing about the djembe, it's not such a cut sound, like with a, with a snare, it booms so it keeps going, it resonates. So if there's something you really want to accent, it, it carries it, it keeps it going for a while. It's a very satisfying sound. Uh, which brings me to solea probabilidad. So for example, I like to hit the djembe on the three. You can hit it in a lot of different places, but if I'm doing 12, to do it. You could do 12 on a Solampa Bolivia, but since a lot of times they'll cut on a 3, 12, you want to you want to keep that you want to keep that satisfying sense of that cut resounding. Uh, so it's a good place to do it right there in a Solampa Bolivia. Uh, uh, 
seguiría so now again it could get pretty out of hand if you use it too often so I would just say you know just in brief brief moments brief accents every once in a while some people will just play here the whole time It's a little bit too away from flamenco. It, it's it's too wet of a sound to keep going with flamenco. Flamenco has a lot of drier sounds. A lot. Of, it sounds a little more more like a crackling fire than it does like a waterfall to me. So djembe to me has just a more resounding, wetter sound, and flamenco has that kind of crisp sound. And this is a good combination, just in doses. But I would. I wouldn't overdo it on the djembe. Now, uh, if you're going to use cymbals, shakers, uh, cowbell, all those kinds of things that you see other percussionists using, which they're doing plenty in flamenco right now, they're fine. But again, in, in just in brief, brief little moments, so maybe there's a little falsetta that the guitarist is playing, and this particular percussion instrument would go really well with it, like a shaker or something. But if you use the shaker the whole time, it can get kind of monotonous. Um, there's exceptions. If somebody's doing something experimental or more modern, you can use any number of things. I mean, there's no rules really, but these are just guidelines. If you're working with other people who do flamenco, these are the th kinds of things we're trying to give them. They're most likely going to want from you as a percussionist. So uh, keep studying and uh, just think about all these different things. This is a new element, but uh, it, it, it has a place in flamenco.